Welcome back to another episode of Oxygen Not Included. We've done a little work between episodes to get things up and running here. Power system still working great. We got our crops nice and warm now. We even have thimble reed growing so we can keep our atmosphere repaired. We installed another comfy bed, so now Sai and Chrono both have bedrooms. We'll start making those bedrooms a little more advanced in another episode, but I just wanted to have something nice there. We are now building a new Great Hall. Great Hall has a deep freezer in it. So we are deep freezing our swampy delights that are made down here. They get dropped off in here, and so they will stay deep frozen for all time. Uh, I'm going to deconstruct this. Um, we have enough tables in here to support 18 duplicates. We've actually brought a couple more people over to this colony, brought the main colony. Patch this back up, I was working on this. So, as far as colonists on second colony now. We have Ashcan, who is our cook. We have Axel, who is our farmer. We have Chrono, who is just a general uh, delivery person. Gunder, who is our artist and our digger. So we may need to change her skills around. Hassan is our demolitionist. Otto is our mechatronics engineer. Kitsai is our digger and our electrical engineer. So we could probably remove electrical engineering from him since his stress is pretty high. Um, and just have him be exosuit and digging. Probably make some changes around with those skills soon. So this is the same setup I have basically on the main asteroid. The Swamp and the Delights get dropped off here. They are in minus 25 degree chlorine, which is chilled from the blast chiller here. Uh, so they stay nice and deep frozen. This auto sweeper can reach in there, even though the duplicates cannot. And so we have one kilogram of Swampy Delight stored in here. I put in a couple more fridges in case we decide we want to have different types of food on this asteroid. But for now, we're just having those. And then duplicates can come up here, grab the food that they need, have their um, meal. I, I decided that for the Great Hall, you need to have one recreation building. So instead of just doing the water cooler like I had before, I decided to put it in an arcade cabinet. So it just makes it a little different. And then we have a couple of statues for the decor. Decor. Um, so yeah, we got, we're still working on getting the temperatures in here nice and steady, but they're improving all around the base they are, mostly because of the heat regenerating here that we can move around to the base. Um, we're going to have to take some cooling up to the power transformers here eventually, but for now we have this cooling loop that goes off of our main cooling loop. Um, one thing that I did figure out, I was trying to figure out why we were having so much trouble with this ethanol still cooling down, even though we had it set up to not transfer any heat. So the door was door was open, but I had gotten in here to do some work, and you can see now that we've closed it, the door is open, but there is oxygen inside the door which means the heat is still transferring through into here so it's a quick simple fix for that is to just switch your 
temperature from uh, sensor to the opposite and back and now it's a vacuum so now this is minus 30 this is dropping the temperature because the cold cannot transfer across and so this will warm up rather quickly and so now we can actually take our piping and run it back through now that we know what the issue was Now it's still pretty cold, so it may chill us out here for a little bit, and we may need to do some work on that, but I think we're going to let it see how it goes, and um, we'll leave this pipe here just in case we need to redirect it, but for now we're going to let it go. The temperature down here is from the polluted water that is being heated up. The problem is we're running very low on polluted water. We need to set this to come quickly so we have some more coming in from there. We need to work out our polluted water sources to make sure that we're getting as much as we can. This one is set at 500 as well, so let's change that to 250. I had them set at 500 so that they would fill up so that we could get all the gases out. I need the this one we can seal and it'll be good but uh, this one down here I just I still have an air pocket in there but I just need the gas or not the gas the uh, polluted water so we're gonna have all that dropping off into here and getting warmed up by the tepidizer so as long as we're still pumping in 22 degree Water or water into it. Oh wow, we're getting it's getting very cold. What I need to do is uh, first of all, I want to change this so that it's all insulated. But then secondly, the water coming in is going straight into the crops, and we do not want that. I want... Let's see, so the water coming in from this side is getting... ...dropped off. Oh, it is getting pumped back up into the filter. It's, just, it's going straight up into the filter, which is fine. This one, however, is not doing what we want it to do, so what we're going to have to do is... Ugh, this is some real pipe spaghetti. But, let's do a... We'll do it like this. Disconnect this. And then once that water is out of that pipe, we will um, connect that and run it through. So we, we just have a few more things to do to get the crops running at the right temperatures. And... Uh, finish up this area up here so that it's all sealed up and then we're we're going to focus on trying to get the temperature in the base up to a, no, a more uh, livable level so we'll be back in a little while once we get all that sorted out what i did here was that we had all the water flowing into the filter and then going straight to the crops. So now all the water coming in from the cold sources are going directly to the vent and getting dropped off into the pool. And then this pump is pumping water up into the filter so that it goes into the plants. Um, 
excess water here is cycling through and getting dropped back in so it's creating a loop but that's okay it means the water can keep mixing so that we get the water to the right temperature eventually we'll just connect this directly to the crops and then bypass the um, that loop but in effect that means that the water going to the crops is now 22 23 degrees I deconstructed all of the thimble reed ones because they were filled with water that was in like the minus and zero degree temperatures so it was we kept having trouble with them growing so now once we plant them since the water there should all be nice and warm it shouldn't take long before they're able to grow because the water coming in should be the right temperature it's a little low but it'll, it'll warm up as the area around it warms up I don't mind if it takes a little bit of time to get there I just can't have it be taking hours um, these crops are still doing very well because they need to be between 10 and 30 and they're 21 so the changes we made we should have a lot of water flowing in here it should all be getting heated up to 22 degrees before it's getting pumped out um, once we have a bigger pool it'll be easier to maintain that but now we have plenty of water flowing in because both of these cool slush geysers are dumping their contents into um, our pool. So this one's not active for another 28 cycles. This one is active for another 70. So it should be... That means after this it'll be 40 cycles. So in... 27 cycles, this one will have 40 left, and then it'll go dormant for 40. This one will go active in 27 cycles, and then will stay active for 68. So it should cover both, cover overlapping each other, I think. So we shouldn't have any problems with not having at least one source of water coming in to our polluted water tank. So we'll have to keep an eye on it, make sure we're getting uh, an increase. Right now we are with just one of them being pumped in, so that's that's good. Um, it's a good sign that we should get plenty. I'll have to put in some automation to shut this off so that we don't receive any more water when it's full. In fact, I can do that right now. Let's put a hydro sensor right here. And then that means I'll be able to just send a red, si red signal when this is full. So if this is above 500 or below 500, you send a green signal. Otherwise, send a red signal. That means when it hits 501 kilograms, it'll shut off this drain, meaning no more water can come into our tank. So that's great. We're going to check this out while we're here. We'll take the muck root just to help us out with some food. We, this is still nice and deep frozen, and we're up to 50,000 rations in Swampy Delights, so things are going great as far as that goes. We're now not losing as much food. In fact, so far this cycle we haven't had any rotted food. Um, last cycle we had 1,000 calories of Paku filet get rot rotten. That might be because we... It might be off in part of the map where we're not going to, which is fine. But we ha we didn't have we didn't have any food on either colony go rotten. So that means things are working great as far as um, our food system goes. Just that th thousand calories of paku. So oh, on this on this side, we now have plenty of larva eggs to keep our slickster farm filled with slicksters but the real real champ here is that we're getting we have 169 units of uh, long hair larva eggs uh, piled up they sit right here in our storage and then as soon as they hatch they get turned into meat the larva eggs take they, they do 3% so they take 33 34 cycles to incubate just sitting there but since we're constantly adding to that supply, that means with the amount that we have right now, once every 
for every cycle we have about five of them maturing so we're getting just from the long hair larva eggs that we don't even want we're getting um, 20,000 calories in food which is almost enough to support our colony uh, on both sides we do we do have we're, we're slowly increasing our calorie count but we are definitely getting an increase because we started at 100,000 at the beginning of this episode so we're getting there um, so the big focus here is that we're still not quite keeping up with the carbon dioxide which is fine but we probably I probably want to look into um, what we want to do with that if we want to vent some of it out just to make it so we don't have so much carbon dioxide or if we want to just let it keep going um, the next focus we're going to work on is fixing this cooling system. So I already redid the um, piping so that all the cooling for all of these is on the main loop. Everything is at a nice 60 degrees and that's because I set this, uh, this here to 60 degrees. I'm trying to get the temperature in here above 60 degrees because slicksters will grow have a higher chance to give us the long-haired larva eggs if their body temperature falls below 60 so if I can keep this whole area just nice nicely at 61 degrees that's exactly what I want it to be so this is all disconnected this whole system here but we need to move it out of here but I don't want to just crack it open because then the water will spill into our oil collection um, and I'm, I'm, I think with the pressure that's in here we should be okay to just crack the top open and get in there uh, so we're just gonna try to do that we'll just deconstruct a tile and then go in and put a pump in and pump this water out to our water tank down here. We are starting to get a buildup of polluted water in here, so we're not quite processing as fast as we were. Um, ooh. That's because these broke. I wonder what happened there. This is, this is something we'll have to fix too. So, we'll put this on the back burner so we can go fix that. I'm going to go take a look at it, and I'll be back once I know what the issue is. got it sorted out. The issue was, once again, a sensor that was set to the wrong amount. Because we're mixing many different fluids in here, these sensors are very particular where they are. This one was set at 500. It's supposed to turn, to close, to open these doors if this tank gets so low that we don't have any fluid to put into the um, boiler, because we do not want heat transferring without that because it'll break things. Uh, we should also connect this to make it so that it shuts off the aqua tuners if that happens. Uh, I'll look into that in the future. But this was set to 500. Because there was mixing gases, there was a little pocket of um, salt water or brine that was here that was on like 480. And so that made the sensor go green which opened these doors which meant we couldn't have any heat transfer going through making the aqua tuners uh, overheat and break so I fixed it for now we'll have to change up the automation to make it so that these get shut off if we're not processing any water but uh, for now we have plenty of a backlog to keep it supplied so we'll keep that going through our water tank still looks good um, I'm going to work on getting this uh, tank emptied out and moved out of here, and then I'll be back. Nearly finished getting all of this water out of the power sauna here. Uh, we just removed all the pipes that were here. And then we put in a pump and just we're having it dump into this reservoir which is just dropping off liquid into the 
already existing uh, waste pipe from the petroleum generators, so it's dropping off all of it into the tank down here, and then it'll just get processed through our um, system. The other thing we did is while we were there, we made some changes to this pump. By now, I think people have probably seen this circuit several times, but just to go over it one more time, we set up a hydro sensor that anytime it detects any fluid, sends a signal to this buffer gate, which runs for 200 seconds powering the um, liquid pump. So basically when the levels of the water down here on the lower level of the um, pit here get up to the point where they splash over to the top, it turns the pump on for 200 seconds to lower it back down. And so that way this pump isn't running constantly. It waits until it's uh, about half full and then it runs for long enough to empty it back down far enough that it's not going to trip the sensor again right away. So we just need to seal that back up. We need to do a little bit of cleaning up in here, getting everything swept out, moved back to storage, and um, just change out these last few blocks now that this is done pumping. So this reservoir will empty out and then we'll get rid of that. And we won't have any more issues with water getting into our oil down here. Like we can see all the water that I've had to mop up over the last several cycles. Or swept up too to get it out of here. Get everything nice and clean. Okay. So, yeah, just a, just a couple little things to clean up here, but that's going to do it for today's episode. I hope you guys enjoyed watching it. If you did, uh, hit that subscribe button uh, or leave a comment. Any, any feedback really helps. Um, and it keeps, keeps me motivated to keep making more. So I hope you're enjoying them, and I hope to see you in the next episode. Bye-bye.